Okay, so this is a very important message in terms of what, how to train dogs in an overall sense. It applies to every breed, every subject, every way of teaching dogs. And it involves teaching a dog how to get their reward. So every dog wants and needs a reward. They want to get something if they do something. And what I try to teach dogs is they can have what they want if they do what I want. So ultimately, I want to teach the dog to so that I become the reward. What are you doing? I want to be the reward. Um, a lot of dogs operate only for themselves. They want something and they try to figure out how to get it. A lot of times it's food. They do something to get food. I want to teach a dog how to get the reward which I want to be me. Uh, so that th they learn they can have what they want, which is me, if they do what I want. I don't know if that, how that sounds, but the end result is they do what I want to get the reward that they want, which is me. That sounds kind of complicated, but so there's a process for that, and it's developing focus on me as the, as the start. Let's imagine a classroom and the teacher has this important information they want to give to the students. And the teacher stands up there and looks out and there's the students. There's 30, 40 kids out there and they're, they, they're texting on their phone, they're shooting spit wads, they're passing notes, they're whispering to each other. Now how effective is that teacher going to be when the kids aren't focusing on them. As opposed to a teacher that comes into the classroom and the students are all in their chairs and they're glued on the teacher. They're focusing on that teacher because they want what that teacher has for them. So, if you can just compare those two scenarios, you know, to dog training, whereas so many trainers are trying to teach a dog something and the dog isn't even paying attention to them. How are they going to get the message? Because the dog is not even remotely interested in the trainer. A side note is that happens because they have learned that the teacher doesn't have anything for them. So you might say, well, how do you go about that process? So that's what today's lesson is about, how to develop the focus and consequently the reward. So Dan's gonna help me out here. Uh, he's just very young, so he doesn't know very much, but he does know that I have what he wants, what he needs, what his reward will be. So, come here, Dan. So, a dog by nature doesn't, he doesn't need me, but I want to create the idea that he does need me. So I'm going to start, you know, most puppies, when they're little, they will get excited about things. So I, that's the first thing I want to do is get him excited about something. So just standing there, he's not too excited. He's just standing there, right? But if I, I can create a little excitement with a sound or with 
once they sort of get I the idea that I have something that excites them, I might even um, revert to something like this because <clears throat> I can eventually throw this. Now, so I'm gonna go like that. Night, night. I'm creating this excitement. Night, night. Ready? Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Good, good, good. Very good. And um, so once I can develop a little excitement, then I'm gonna say, well, where does that excitement come? How to get focus on me? So I'm gonna say sit, and I'm gonna take the excitement, the focus, the food, whatever you've got, and I'm putting it here. Now, what is he doing right now? You focus on me, aren't you? He's focusing on me because I have what he wants. And I, over a period of time, I'm gonna make a transition from this to me. Now I'm what he wants. And he's going to do whatever he can to get that. And he's gonna learn that if he does what I want, he's gonna get what he wants. So let's say he wants this. Sit, sit. Now he's looking at that, he wants that, right? But I'm teaching him that he only can get it if he looks at me. That's how he gets what he wants. He gets it from me. I'm the source of what he wants. And eventually, over a period of time, I am what he wants. I have what he wants, I give him what he wants, and he gets it by doing what I want. So that, to me, is sort of a, a, a paragraph on how to train dogs. They learn that if they do what I want, they get what they want. And so, I don't care if you're teaching a seeing eye dog, a retriever, a hound dog, whatever it is, if they don't, they can't get what they want unless they're getting it from me. So I don't want a dog that only operates from what he wants if it's food. I want to train him if what he wants is me. So in the essence, that is my approach to training a dog. And it's a long process uh, when you say, oh, I want him to be able to do a 300 yard retrieve, or, or I want him to go out and round up some sheep that are out there about 600 yards, et cetera, et cetera. So that is my small paragraph on the beginning stages of how to train any dog. So Dan and I have a friend that's here today who is a dog trainer also and has a very, very special approach to training. He's got a special manual that he uses to train dogs. So this is Hank Huff from Kingdom Dogs Ministries. Hi, I'm Hank Huff, Kingdom Dog Ministries. I appreciate Bill telling you who, who we are. I'm gonna bring a dog in here in a few minutes. His name is Sunday Morning. His registered name happens to be Matthew 16, 15. It's a Bible verse, you might wanna look it up. I do something different. Bill said that uh, he may not agree with me. I haven't really told him what I do or showed him exactly, but he's into anything that's unique and different that is good for the dog to make a dog a better dog and a human a better human. And uh, whether or not this works, it works for me and my dogs, you see, the manual that he was talking about that we use, we use God's Word, we use the Bible. Strange as it may sound, it's the best known manual for life for both a dog, a man, and a child. So kind of give you a little demonstration. Loved what Bill said. Uh, a magic way of helping us grow as dog trainers and people. Uh, it's so true. If, I, if that dog has, value in me and he knows that I want to help him get what he wants he's going to do what he wants to get what I want but the Bible tells us that you know uh, and, and that's what I want to explain I work on not so much how Bill's the master there but why in the world 
do we need this dog? What's the purpose of this thing? God's word is real clear. It's confusing to me till I had a puppy. I looked at my puppy and I said, hey, you're my creation. I created you. I put your mother with your father. I wanted you to, to do some great works that I have prepared for you in advance. Is that not what we do with dogs? I prepared it in advance for him so that you can tell the world what who I am. And how am I going to get you to look at me? How am I going to get you to make me most important? Fundamental, foundational. The dog has to sit and by God's word says, he who keeps his eyes fixed on me, I'll keep in perfect peace. Sit puppy, keep your eyes on me and I'll keep you in perfect peace. The more his eyes are on me, the closer he walks next to me, harder it is for you to steal my dog or the world for that matter. It said, seek my face, find me. The manual's telling us to do exactly what Bill said. Find me, look to me. Why? Because I have not come to condemn you. I have come to give you a more abundant life. Interesting. Is that, isn't that what we do with that puppy that doesn't want to pay a bit of attention to us? I'm not here to condemn you, puppy. I'm here to set you free. <laughs> the Bible says something very interesting. We call this a blind. We hide a blind out there. The Bible says, I have great treasures, riches, for you hidden in secret places. Why? So that when you find them, you'll know that it is I that prepared them and gave them to you. It's so biblical. God's got such great things for us if we'll just stop and look to Him and learn His Word. So let me just kind of show you what that looks like. I need my dog's eyes on me, not the things of the world that I can give him. Sunday morning, here. Heel, sit please. Sunday's an alpha. Very strong, self-serving dog. What he's going to have to do is put his pride down and put his own personal desires down. And more importantly, keep his eyes fixed on me. Now, where are his eyes? Are they on the prize? You know what I do if a dog keeps his eyes on the prize? If he were to just keep staring at that bumper, I will remove that bumper from his life until I become his greatest treasure. Don't let that happen to you. Get your eyes off of the new house and the pretty girl and the husband. Get all, take them off of everything and put them on God. Because I came to give you a more abundant life. When my puppy does that, when I see a little puppy come up here and I throw one on either side and he no longer looks at the prize, the bumper, but looks at me, I call that barn again. He now sees me with different eyes. He now has the ability to watch my hands. And you know what I can do for him? Like the good Lord, I have a prize for you. I have a great riches for you, and they're hidden in secret places. I don't want you to get either one of those. Look at me. Watch my hands. Back. Oh, my gosh. What would you get? Come here, son. Come here, son. Here. I told you. Here. Heal. Sit. I didn't come to condemn you. I came here to give you a more abundant life. Hey, who are your eyes on? Have you put your pride down? Have you guys got fixed on the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Bible? It'll make a difference. It'll change you. Thank you.